Welcome everyone to the AI illusion, the debate that we're going to have about artificial intelligence. Now, a third of all companies worldwide claim to have implemented AI in some form, and more than two thirds in the United Kingdom and the United States. But critics argue that this is just marketing hype. Artificial intelligence has not yet happened and there's no sign of it being anywhere near about to happen. Luke Julia, who's Samsung's Vice President of Innovation, has stated that we have better machines than in the past, but they don't involve artificial forms of intelligence. Should we see the future of automation and machine learning and give up on more super intelligence forms of AI? Might this make us feel less scared and more in control of the future? Or is artificial intelligence's revolution not only on its way, but already here and changing our world radically for better or for worse. With me to discuss this today, and with you, are four incredible speakers. So I'm going to quickly introduce them and give a brief biography, and then we will dive right in. So first up, Martin Rees. Martin has co-authored more than 500 academic papers on subjects as intoxicating as the Big Bang and dark matter. He's currently Astronomer Royal, is a long-standing member of the House of Lords, and has previously been President of the Royal Society a position that Isaac Newton once held. More recently, Martin authored On the Future, Prospects for Humanity, in which he discussed the dangers that humanity will face in the next century, including the potential risks of AI. Our next speaker is Laura Mersini houghton She's a cosmologist, theoretical physicist, and professor at the University of North Carolina. We're very happy to have her joining us across the Atlantic. Her work focuses on the birth of our universe, She's a proponent of the multiverse theory, which suggests that we are just one of many universes. Her theories have been successfully backed up by much after She appeared on the BBC program, What Happened Before the Big Bang, um, and is going to definitely have some really fascinating debates, I suspect, with Martin on some of these points. Our third speaker is Hilary Lawson. He is a postmodern philosopher and a renowned critic of philosophical realism. He's the author of Reflexivity, the Postmodern Predicament, which argues that the paradoxes of self-reference have been central to 20th century philosophy. He is perhaps best known for his theory of closure, which puts forward non-realist metaphysics and contends that we close the openness of the world with our thought and language. Last but not least is Kate Devlin. She is a computer scientist, sex robot theorist, senior lecturer in social and cultural artificial intelligence at King's College London, and the author of Turned On, Science, Sex, and Robots. She has previously said that instead of fearing the rise of machines, we could quite literally embrace them. So introductions over, we're going to dive in. Each speaker is going to address a question and give three minutes to that question, and then we'll proceed on with the debate. So, First, just three minutes times four speakers is 12. The question that we'll go for first is should we give up talk of artificial intelligence in terms of super intelligence, for instance, and focus on more limited applications such as automation and machine learning? So Martin Rees, your thoughts in three minutes, please. Yes. Well, I think we should avoid semantics and just ask what machines will do and what they're unlikely ever to do. The main point is that they work a million times or more faster than us. So they can uh, absorb data and process data much quicker, and that's why they can do amazing things. They do amazing calculations, they can uh, uh, monitor and control elaborate networks, um, and they're very useful for that, um, and they can um, uh, learn, as we know, to play uh, games like chess and go, and do better than human beings. But that's essentially because they can play against themselves one game per second, and so they gain experience very, very fast. And of course, um, what we worry about is if decisions about us are made by a machine, then do we trust it? Even if it's normally right, are we prepared to uh, accept its judgments uh, if uh, it's going to decide whether we uh, uh, get released from prison, have an operation, or get credit, something like that. That's a big issue. But I think we must be excited about the prospects of um, advanced artificial intelligence. Um, certainly, it can uh, um, uh, help um, um, 
uh, a quants uh, stockbroker to do better than any human player. Um, if the Chinese wanted to have a completely planned economy, they could have it in a way that Marx could never dream of by being able to uh, gather all the data and process it. Um, and uh, in science, um, I think it will enable us to make discoveries because it can already do many things better than humans can, human mathematicians. You can analyze data much, much faster, find weak correlations we would miss. And uh, to touch base a bit with Lara, um, I think if the uh, basic physics of the Big Bang involves string theory and 10 or 11 dimensions. The mathematics may be too hard for any human, but AI may do the calculations and spew out the answer. And if that answer accords with observation, then we have to take the theory seriously. So there's huge potential. But of course, the science fiction idea is that these machines will interact with the, uh, the real world. And here, it's much more difficult because they can only interact with the external world via something like the Internet of Things. Um, or, and we know that robots are very clumsy compared to real people. And so when people talk about the kind of jobs that are going to be taken over by uh, machines, um, it's more likely to be certain uh, um, white-collar jobs, um, accountancy and things like that. I don't imagine ever that a machine is going to be able to be a plumber. Because if you think what that involves, it involves uh, going to a strange house, poking around to find a leak and using tools to mend it. That's the kind of job, and gardening is similar, where machines will never realistically take over. But they will take over, and uh, uh, as if they're complementary to what we're doing, this is definitely a plus. So I don't think we need to worry about the singularity. As I say, uh, we have to worry about um, uh, what these can do and how we can uh, ensure that the people whose jobs are displaced are given more interesting jobs instead. So just to make one point, in that point, the jobs that will be easily displaced are the mind-numbing jobs like being uh, uh, in, in an Amazon warehouse or a call center. Great if they can be replaced, provided that the companies that own them can be taxed and the money used to fund lots of jobs for carers and things like that, where the human element is crucial. So they're not going to take over from humans, but they can complement and amplify what humans can do. So I welcome these developments, but we've got to keep our eye on them. Yes, so, well, as the philosopher on the panel, perhaps I, uh, I'd like to begin with just saying something about the broader sort of conceptual framework, which might help us understand how we, different people, take up different relationships in relation to artificial intelligence. So. In general, and these are very broad brush things, uh, um, people who are materialists, that is people who think that the world is made of physical stuff and there is only that physical stuff, tend to think that um, it's going to be possible to build an artificially intelligent machine. Um, because after all, a machine is, is made of physical bits and in principle, there's no reason why one couldn't do it. But there are a whole lot of people who don't accept that the world is just material and who think that there are other things, that things like thought and consciousness are different sort of stuff. And therefore, they tend to think that it's not possible for artificially intelligent machines to be, uh, to be possible. Um, now, having laid out that basic sort of framework, I'm going to confuse you because I'm, a, I'm not a materialist. I, I don't think the world just consists of material. Um, and I'm also not a realist in the sense that I, I don't think that our thoughts uh, and language describe the world. But I do think that it is possible to make uh, or will be possible to make uh, intelligent machines. I don't think we're remotely close at the moment. I think there's a vast amount of hype about uh, artificial intelligence. Every other company is saying they're using artificial intelligence. They're not at all. It's just a, a form of uh, machine um, uh, products, as it were, that's, there's, no, there's no intelligence going on there. But I think that in principle it could be possible. And uh, very briefly, the reason I think that's the case is because the way I think humans work is that they don't uh, understand the world by seeing how it really is. They understand the world by making, uh, by taking, as it were, their input data and holding it in certain ways in order to be able to intervene. So let me give you an example of, from vision. So in the case of, of vision, 
The neurons in the eye, I'll, I'll adopt the scientific model for a moment, there are other models, but uh, uh, the neurons in the eye either fire or they don't in response to a stimulus. Their firing is not a description of the world, it's a response to the world. It either fires or it doesn't fire. And that, that choice of it firing or not firing is its way, it's the way that neuron, as it were, responds to the world. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.